right now, a lot of experts believe Russia is sort of in the process of launching its new offensive, which has been advertised for many weeks. But for now, most of the front lines remain pretty consistent, and there hasn't been much movement. We're in a very grinding, attritional battle where nobody is having any major victories, and it's kind of a battle of inches right now. Well, Putin obviously also gave a speech this week where he reiterated a lot of the same points as to why he launched the war. Um, you know, a revisionist history about Ukraine. And that, in some ways, I think signals Putin's preparing the Russian public for a long, drawn-out war, and that at least his calculus and his position hasn't changed. I don't think, at least right now, Putin is going to be changing his position and is going to be kind of pushing uh, to take territory in Ukraine. But I think we'll see how the Russian military and how equipped they are to, to do these offensives that are planned. As we go into sort of year two of this war, I think the key is right now is that, that both Russia and Ukraine believe that they can achieve their objectives on the battlefield. They both think it's possible to be able to seize the territory they need to seize to go to the negotiating table with an upper hand. But right now, neither side sees the, the value or the necessity in that. That may change if, you know, Russia doesn't make any big moves and if Ukraine doesn't make any big moves in 2023. But I think how this war ends is a very, very complicated topic because it's gonna depend on what the map looks like. And of course, we've seen from Russia in particular with things like ceasefires, Putin is not necessarily known to be the most trustworthy negotiator. I think the fundamental problem in this conflict right now is that what Ukraine wants and what Russia wants there doesn't really seem to be any sort of middle ground. And that makes envisioning a peace deal possible, but it's, it's hard to make predictions for this year or any year in the future about what the Ukraine war might look like. President Biden uh, just visited Kyiv in a huge show of support uh, this week in, ahead of the one-year mark, and he gave a pretty rousing speech in Warsaw that renewed, in both instances, the United States' commitment to Ukraine. So at least uh, the United States right now is, as Joe Biden has said, kind of showing its unwavering support for Ukraine. Of course, things are going to get more complicated in politics, as they, they always do. Republicans took control of the House. Um, some of the leaders have expressed more skepticism about kind of, I think uh, Kevin McCarthy called it a blank check for Ukraine. And so there does seem to be some pushback from members of the Republican caucus um, on terms of how and for how long we are going to continue to be funding Ukraine. That being said, there's pretty solid bipartisan support in Congress right now for continuing the the effort to back Ukraine in its fight against Russia. That may change, of course, as the war drags on and the price tag gets higher and higher. I think the question for a lot of Ukrainian refugees is sort of what does the future look like if this war continues to go on and on? Do you build a life in, you know, in Poland or another European country or the United States where you might be living? Do you think about going home? And then how do governments that are hosting these refugees, how do they help get access to labor markets and other services, psychosocial support services, so that Ukrainian refugees are not living in limbo? And I think that's one of the bigger questions going forward is not just the immediate needs of that the people who've been displaced, which they still very much need, but also looking forward for more longer and medium term because we don't know what's going to happen with the war.